Good day and welcome to this MSS refresher session as part of iLearn. This session is geared towards our MSS lead teachers and we're really happy that you're here with us and able to join in on this session today. I'm Vanessa Lewis and I'm a learning consultant with the school division and typically I'm joined on these meetings by a number of other division level MSS lead team members including our MSS guru and expert Sandra Portratz, our tech and integration lead James Lowe, our educational assistant and an individual in charge of sort of the secretary and SDS connections of MSS, uh, Linda Clausen, and our overseer of all things MSS, Superintendent of Education, Sherry Martin. Um, I really prefer live sessions for a few different reasons. Um, I really like the team approach and getting some different voices involved in our sessions. I love having an interactive audience so it doesn't sound like I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> and uh, also just that I'm, um, I think as a team, we're able to deliver more authentic and real world demos and, and uh, applications and answer questions on the fly and those types of things when we are in a live environment which helps us be a little bit more responsive to your needs but just given the nature of iLearn and the need for um, an online pre-recorded session as well as the fact I, honestly that our um, environment that I would normally demonstrate in is still in the previous year's um, configuration and not updated to this school year yet uh, this this format will more than serve the purpose for today. So again, thank you for joining and uh, we'll get into things right away. So once again, welcome. This is our agenda for today's session. We will begin with some MSS information, some updates and some refreshers. Then we'll move into lessons learned. Uh, the next portion will involve some needs for further support and it will involve some self-exploration time where you can take a bit of time and use it as you need to um, to become more comfortable in your role as the MSS lead. Um, then we'll follow up with some uh, processes for supports or questions and some wrap up and next steps. It's always awesome when we can begin with some successes. So I will highlight a few successes in relation to my school task. Um, for those of you who have been on this journey for a while, you'll know that we started implementing my school task within our schools in the school division in the fall of 2019. Um, and into the 2019-2020 school year. So it hasn't been that long. And as you know, uh, there has been a lot of changes in education and on our world since uh, sort of spring 2020 that uh, went alongside all of our new learnings in relation to my school SAS. But uh, even with all of that, we have definitely made significant progress and we are doing a great job of onboarding our schools and most recently this last school year our colony teachers have started using my school sask our kindergarten teachers are starting to use my school sask so we really got a lot to celebrate um, last year was also just our second year since shifting to the common provincial four-point rubric which is definitely another success thanks to you our pebble mentors our administrators and our teachers for supporting each other with this process as well as involving um, our parents and our students and families in related conversations so uh, thank you for that uh, schools are now all using the family portal uh, we realize some students and families utilize it a little bit more than others and we as a division lead team are very open to your feedback and input as to ways or ideas that we might be able to come up with in terms of helping them become a bit more active and encouraging more regular usage. From a division perspective, I'd just like you all to know too that we are now onboarding or they are now onboarding wave three, which means that all of our public schools in Saskatchewan are on My School SAS this year. And that's huge and it's quite significant. And I think, you know, if you talk to the secretaries and whatnot in your buildings, they're gonna be really excited about that because it's going to make things like um, 
uh, transferring students and, and, you know, withdrawing and re-enrolling them in, in various schools throughout the province, that process a lot, a lot easier than when some schools were on my school SASC and, and some were not. And we'll also see, um, you know, some other benefits to us all being on one system of record as we, as we move forward. But definitely, and I know I've said this before, but I will say it again, our most valuable resource and definitely worth celebrating is the work that all of you as our in-school MSS teams do um, in support of each other, um, you know, in collaborating with your administrators, your secretaries, your colleagues, um, and the time that you spend becoming um, experts in my school SASC. So thanks to all of you. Um, we will continue working together and sharing knowledge and expertise because we've really learned that that has become our greatest strength. Um, teamwork is key. And I'll just remind you too that right now secretaries are working very hard in your buildings to get their school schedules set up and prepare, you know, the details that you will need as teachers for things like attendance and teacher grade book. Um, input and those types of things. So just be patient. Um, it takes a little bit of time at the beginning of the school year to get all that organized. So if you dip into my school SASC live today and you know find some things aren't configured just yet, it just may be that they need a little bit more time um, at their side of things to get things ready for you. Um, and also just keep in mind, we are all and continue to be at different places in relation to our learning, but we are all still learning in relation to my school SASC and that in and of itself is a success and something to celebrate. So here we go. So we'll begin with some my school SASC updates, reminders and refreshers. There's a number of resources to support my school SASC. The first thing on the list to make mention of is the resource bank. We do have a group on the resource bank dedicated to my school SASC. You know, you're welcome to join, so are other teachers and within your buildings, you're welcome to encourage them to join. Um, it just is a good space for any of the updates, whether they be most recent um, generic Aspen handbooks or, you know, things that we've created from the Sunmust School Division that are specific to how we report at report card times or the, any tips and tricks that we might like to share. Just a good one-stop shop for, for things like that for easy reference. Uh, we have had an advisory team. It's not as active right now, but certainly proved extremely useful during the um, times of implementation when we were looking for advice and ideas um, from the various perspectives of, you know, secretaries, admin, uh, teachers, etc. within our school division. We still have all of you as MSS school leads as very critical resources. And we also have, like I mentioned, our SunWest Division Office L1 team who works to um, support the division and school implementation of my school SASC. So definitely uh, a team effort. Um, also of note is the fact that the online help feature in my school SASC is quite good. So um, if you haven't used it before, maybe dig into it, take some time to investigate it a little bit because it does help provide you with some supports, um, you know, on, on various pages or, or areas that you might be working on within my school SASC over and above uh, what we provide in the handbooks and the um, SunWest updates. Just a reminder, and we did mention this to new teachers, those who are kind of first time into Aspen um, and into my school SASC might need a bit of help um, getting signed in. So just as lead teachers thought it would be important to make mention to you um, that, that the first time in, teachers really have to go down to that log in using section of my school SASC login screen and change it from whatever it is, it's generally on province, but to log in using SunWest SD 207 first and then click on that AASP button and then to begin the sign in process with their username and password as to as per their um, email credentials. That will just um, you know, get them signed in properly. Otherwise, they may get stuck in that uh, endless loop of doom, <laughs> as we call it, and need some help desk support uh, getting back in. So um, please support that for any people that are, you know, 
kind of new to my school Sask. Um, there's a number of videos which were created in the past. Um, there's a fundamentals video and handbook which was created um, by Aspen for use with my school Sask. So it's pretty generic, but it is a good video um, as an overview. We have a staff view set up in navigation video and handbook still on the resource bank as well as an attendance and seating chart video. Um, that one might be helpful you know for new teachers just to get a quick visual. Um, in addition we have a, a, a handout as to how to do attendance and start thinking about the seating chart. Um, but again we will redo some of these videos. We just are waiting for our um, experimental environment to be reconfigured into the current school year to be able to create those and make them look authentic. So watch for that. But in the meantime, if you or anyone in your building needs some supports, um, these might be some areas to consider. And we're trying to keep all of the most recent information um, updated in the resource bank. Well, just wanting everybody to know that the using gradebook document, the Aspen generic one has been updated and, and it now has a number of Saskatchewan uh, specific information in it, uh, which is wonderful. It, you know, we still have as a division, some of our own unique customizations and, and things that we have to consider in relation to how we report on grade one to nine using outcome-based reporting and a bit more traditionally with our grade 10 to 12 reporting, but it is a really great document but if you do have in you know your binders or your um, folders on OneDrive um, any of these handbooks which have been provided in the past um, please make note that the using gradebook has been updated this slide just provides a number of the topics within the using gradebook document for easy reference there may be some areas that are of particular interest to you that you might want to dig into in a bit more detail when you have some time um, later in this session to explore. Also for reference purposes, it can be quite helpful to have a copy of our 2021-2022 school year calendar on hand. Um, if you do need it, you know, maybe check with your secretaries. They may have printed out some color copies that you can have access to, or you can also find and print it or save it from our SunWest website. As well, administrators and secretaries have access to information in relation to all of our various reporting periods. So as an MSS lead, you just might want to become familiar with them. There are certain report terms for grades K to 9 and also some quarterly reporting requirements for grade 10 to 12. Um, so you may want to have some discussions with your admin and or secretaries in relation to um, the timeframes for all of that. Mentioned as a success was our ability to shift from our previous five point rubric to the new provincial four point rubric system. And just to remind you that there are an amazing and incredible number of resources in relation to better understanding our academic achievement scale, our um, board policy 18 around 21st century competencies and how all of our 21st century competencies align with our factors affecting student achievement or FASA. So if you or anybody in your school is looking for you know further supports I refer you to this document um, which is on the resource bank to begin with but also to a number of additional resource bank um, documents that will, will help as school teams are looking to support 21st century skills and tracking for growth um, within factors affecting student achievement and, the, and their connections to the 21st century skills. So this one being shown on the screen right now is fantastic. It looks at all of our 21st century competencies from creativity through to computer and digital technologies, and then looks at the alignment of each of the criteria for those 21st century skills and how they align with our factors affecting student achievement. So things like our lifelong learning, our sense of self, engaged citizenship, and work habits that we're going to be reporting on at various reporting intervals um, throughout the school year. So um, that's, that's something that you may want to dig into a little bit more. 
As well, there are sections of the resource bank which have um, teacher built 21st century competency exemplar rubrics um, that will also be helpful in, in tracking growth within these areas. So just the Pebble mentors, administrators are well aware of these resources, but thought it would also be useful just to uh, make sure our MSS leads are aware because it's all part of good practice. You know, we're separating the student behaviors, um, the FAFSA from um, the academic achievement and reporting on them in a slightly different way. So um, it's just good for, for everybody on the school team to be aware and to work together in supporting students um, through, through the process. So as we have worked together in learning the new My School SAS system, we have come up with a number of lessons learned along the way and a number that we are still learning. So the next portion of this presentation will just be to quickly highlight um, some things that are just meant to remind you of some discoveries that we've made um, that will help with your thinking and planning as you begin to support your teachers within your building this school year. First up is the importance of keeping a backup copy. Um, some teachers like to have copies, you know, paper-based copies. Other likes to have things online in Excel or, you know, some kind of other online uh, tool. So just um, great practice to keep a backup copy. Um, things are still a little bit new to some of us in my school, Sask, and it's not on the regular, but we have had situations where, um, you know, teachers have lost some data because of some changes that had to be made to the setup to the grade book and that kind of thing. So having a backup is, is, is good practice. As well, you may want to refer to uh, the Using Gradebook document, the new one from August in relation to teacher preferences. There's sort of a gear icon on the top right of um, the screen um, when you're in your gradebook, or you can also find it from the set preferences section on the top right of the screen when you first log in. Um, and you will see a number of things in relation to general student information, ability to add assignments, um, missing assignments and averages. Um, there's a few things under general that a teacher might want to take some time to set up if they haven't already. Um, things like shading alternate lines in gradebook might be nice. Maybe the direction that your um, tab is going to go either down or across um, might be something that teachers want to customize. You know, nothing too crazy, but there are some things in there. Um, you can flip through the other tabs and, and see if there's any preferences that you would recommend for um, teacher settings. Um, but the main one to draw your attention to is that averages um, section on the far right. You will want to go in and take a look, um, have teachers take a look at their grade scale preferences in relation to the averages. Um, grade K to 9 teachers do not need a grade scale as we're reporting on outcomes and strands. Uh, grade 10 to 12 teachers will need a grade scale because they are, um, you know, reporting a bit more traditionally with the percentage with alpha, without alpha grade scale. Um, there's uh, information that explains that a little bit more in the um, gradebook grade scale document, which was produced um, quite some time ago. I think it was November of 2019. Um, and it may be worth just having a look at. Um, teachers may have configured their grade scale in a few different places. So that document helps with, you know, where to look. Uh, grade scale preferences, the um, grade book class details tab, the categories in the assignments. But I believe what we were finding in practice, you know, if a teacher teaches K to nine and 10 to 12, they could, um, you know, set their preference uh, for whatever they're utilizing the most, but you can always change um, those preferences at the lower levels. So, you know, within the assignments, for instance, um, if you need to, but take a look at that document for, for some details if needed. Um, just a reminder too that for grades one to nine, we do engage in outcome-based reporting. Um, so we're making sure that we're entering all of our outcomes under that uh, standard or outcome column uh, rather than in the traditional column. And again, there's um, great documentation about how to do that, how to enter those outcome scores if anybody is needing it. 
And also the, we have the academic achievement scale as well as the other codes, the IE for insufficient evidence, NA for not applicable, and IG for individualized goals. And if you're just remembering kind of the lessons learned or <laughs> tips and tricks, um, the IBNA and IE are built right into our academic achievement scale for grades one to nine, which technically is awesome. It's really good if we can, you know, further indicate to students and, and parents what is going on. Maybe there has been insignificant evidence or, um, you know, maybe something in, a student is working on an individualized goal in that area and it's a, a great form of communication. Um, but as we found out, those codes are currently calculating a zero, which is a still a known MSS issue. Um, so as a temporary workaround, we were advised to, you know, leave the score blank if that's the case within those outcome columns. You know, if we were going to use um, IE, for example, um, just to leave it blank and then to use the assignment feedback to provide the related information. Um, you could put that um, IE within that feedback and provide a bit of a comment um, as to why that is the case. Um, and I know that it will be really awesome once those codes are working properly, but we did check at the beginning of the school year here and um, it's still calculating a zero and it hasn't been fixed yet. So just um, making sure that we are aware of that. There are some other ways we could explore, you know, maybe to, to deal with these codes in the interim, but um, such as maybe special codes that we could create, but every teacher would have to do that. So um, we just need to make sure that we're using common practice within our, our schools in relation to, um, you know, if we need to indicate I, E, N, A, or I, G until these get working properly. So if any questions, you know, just reach out on that and, and we'll support. Also, just a quick reminder, you don't have to worry, you know, too much about this till closer to reporting period times, but for elementary and middle level um, teachers in relation to factors affecting student achievement, uh, a teacher will have a FAFSA class that's been added and assigned to them. It's typically a homeroom teacher or some kind of designated teacher within the building. So even though um, FAFSA will only be assigned to, assigned to one um, teacher, School collaboration is awesome and it's encouraged in order to um, to report on the factors affecting student achievement. At the high school level, it looks a little bit different. We've got a FAFSA rubric that's been slipped into um, the course for each of our courses. So each individual teacher or subject area teacher will be able to report on FAFSA elements at the reporting period time. The Using Gradebook document contains a lot of great information for teachers as they're beginning to set up their gradebooks during a new school year. There's information on things like linking classes, how grades are being calculated, you know, how to set up categories um, and any category weighting, um, you know, if needed in, in certain classes, how to create assessments or assignments within my school SAS, how to enter scores. And I do advise looking at the Using Gradebook document kind of in conjunction with some of our SunWest produced documentation just to make sure the proper um, procedures and protocols are being followed uh, for um, setting up gradebook for at the beginning of the school year. Some of you have become experts at using more advanced features in gradebooks, such as importing assignments. And it's just basically a tool that you can find out a little bit more about in the using gradebook document that lets you take and import assignments or assessments from other classes or from other school years into your current uh, gradebook for those same classes. So might be a feature you want to look into if you think that might be a time saver for yourself or some of your teachers within your buildings. Default weighting is also a topic you might want to spend a bit more time investigating. You can do so by reading up in Appendix C um, of the Using Gradebook document, a section called Set Default Weighting. There's some critical information in there about um, default weighting in order for the averages to calculate properly. We also prepared a document, the Gradebook Teacher Tips document, um, that had some information provided to 
teachers when they were deciding how to set up their grade books, especially for grade 10 to 12 courses. It's fantastic that MySchoolSask offers teachers a lot of possibilities, but we just have to make sure that as um, teachers, we are understanding um, how MySchoolSask is treating the default weighting or calculating averages based on what we're telling it we want it to do. So that might be an area, you know, if you're needing further support or your um, colleagues at the school that you may want to investigate and you can certainly reach out if you have any questions and we'll help you with that. Hopefully this is becoming a bit more second nature by now, but please make sure your visibility types on your assignments are being set to public. Um, we did find some discrepancies when we first rolled out Family Portal, where some of the information seen on Portal versus, um, you know, in, in your gradebook were different. And that was mainly because some of the assignments were set to private rather than public. So just making sure that you look at the visibility type in setting your assignments. Special codes are an excellent feature in MySchoolSask, but as we learned, um, every teacher must set up their own special codes. So as a division, we recommended a few special codes that schools may want to consider having all teachers set up in relation th to things like um, when you're doing the one to nine grading, um, indicating that assignment has been collected, um, you know, that something is maybe incomplete or those types of things. You can certainly utilize those codes if you wish, um, but you'll want to make sure that everybody understands how to set them up. Teachers can also set some different um, special codes depending on how they're utilizing gradebook, but best practice reminder is to be sure that teachers, students, and families are aware of what those special codes mean. Uh, further to special codes, another tool within my school SASC is footnotes. And I know something we heard from the advisory team when we were exploring capabilities within my school SASC was the desire to indicate late. Um, assignments and to have that late kind of preserved, you know, won't affect their academic achievement or their grade, but, um, you know, sometimes you just want to keep track of some of those habits in relation to the submission of assignments. So something that teachers can consider, and again, they would have to set this up individually within their own grade books under your guidance, but you could have a footnote that indicates late. And then what you'll see is, is just a small sort of um, subscript L um, that will appear by those assignments, just as a reminder to teachers and students that yes, that's in, they know how they did on that particular assignment or assessment, um, but it was late. <laughs> this is a lesson learned and still learning. Um, we have been struggling a little bit since the implementation of MySchoolSask with our middle level PAA survey course outcomes. Um, we're still struggling a little bit. We sent out a survey last school year in the spring to find out more about how schools are offering the different um, and configuring the different PAA survey classes, found out a lot of fantastic information, thanks to yourselves and your administrators and your secretaries. Um, and we were hoping we would have a better solution for how to, you know, track by outcome and, and um, engage in best practice reporting in relation to our middle level PAA uh, survey courses, but we're not quite there yet. So please stay tuned. There will be more to come, um, but, Right now, we're anticipating progressing as we did last year in relation to those middle level PAA outcomes. The beauty of my school SASC is that as we learn features, they really remain quite constant and the same as we move between reporting periods and into different school years. Um, something though, just as a note for MSS lead teachers is we did onboard with kindergarten reporting last year. Again, a lot of the how to's are very similar, but kindergartens do report a little bit differently than other grade one to nine classes. Uh, for example, in kindergarten, um, the kindergarten is actually set up into four different classes with the intellectual domain, the physical domain, the social emotional domain, and the spiritual domain. Um, your kindergarten teachers will be well aware of the outcomes involved in each of those domains and how they're, you know, 
setting up learning experiences and, and doing uh, their tracking. Um, the different piece though, and again, the procedures for how we enter is very similar, um, but they will be reporting using um, an alpha scale. So the continually, usually, sometimes, and rarely, which is something that uh, Carol and the kindergarten team uh, determined would be a best fit for us in the school division. So just some things, you know, you will have the expertise in relation to my school's task. The kindergarten teachers will have the expertise in relation to uh, curriculum and what they're trying to achieve. And we'll continue to work together in terms of some sound reporting. And finally, just a bit of a wrap up in these lessons learned about student and family portal. It is fantastic that more students and families are using the portal. We still know that there's a bit of angst in, and um, some hesitancy in using it, maybe because of usability or the fact that there isn't an app for it, but it's still a fantastic tool for those that are utilizing it. And we hope to improve that usability this school year. Um, some things for teachers though, um, that are useful to think about as you're setting up your grade books at the beginning of the school year is there's lots of ways we can communicate some additional information with parents and, and students through the portal. So when you're in your grade book and you're you know entering information for your class, there is a section called portal, portal notes. And if you click on show on portal notes or show no, notes in portal, I can't talk, and right into that um, box there, Parents and students will see anything additional. So if you had some overall course information or you know things about the course outline or things that students' families needed to know, that would be a great place to put that information. Also, when you are digging into your um, uh, setting up your classes a little bit more and creating some particular assignments, there's a tab where you can click on portal description and under that portal description, you could add any information about that particular assignment or assessment that you were entering. And again, it's just more communication um, through the portal with students and families. And also, I think everyone's well aware of this, but for everything that you score, you're able to provide some assignment feedback for those, um, you know, grade one to nine students, for example, in this, in this um, visual and able to then give them specific feedback on their assignment that will be able to be viewed on the portal. Finally, My School SAS can be used as a communication tool if you're looking to email students or parents. Um, we have learned though, another lesson learned, that we want to proceed with caution when we do decide to use My School Sask um, for communicating with parents and students in this way. You just want to make sure that you're paying close attention to all the pop-ups and things along the way to make sure that you are emailing who you intend to email. If you're emailing, you know, maybe a progress report to a particular student, you want to make sure it goes to that particular student and not to you know your whole class grouping or to some you know a contacts which would be parents or family members of other students um, you know just want to make sure that you're paying close attention to uh, the details of the wizards that pop up and that your emails are um, landing in the inboxes of those that they're intended to being that it's the start of the school year, all we'll say about report cards and posting grade process is to stay tuned. There will be more to come a little bit closer to that uh, first reporting period time in November. Wrap up and next steps. We are about at a half an hour into this session now, and we are going to turn it over to you for some time to explore. Um, this might be a good time for you to become reacquainted with all things My School Sask related. Maybe you want to dig into the resource bank and find some of these documents that we've been talking about or look for some of the updates. Um, you might want to, if you have uh, other teachers in your building today or over the next couple of days, connect with your new teachers or um, colleagues you know, find out what their needs are and how you might be able to best support. And I also encourage you to take some time during this, um, these moments here to reflect on the needs, your needs, the needs of your staff, and to respond to us, um, the L1 division lead team, using this uh, QR code or the form 
if you wish to do that, we would really appreciate it because we are looking for some feedback on how we can better support you. So in terms of those supports, take your time, you know, do some digging. You can go back and forth between um, pieces of this PowerPoint if you wish, if you need to refer to things. Um, think about those needs for support. And at the end of your time, if you don't mind filling out that form, that would be fantastic. And just general good practice within our division. Um, we look to you as MSS leads and, and also our administrators to support teachers within your building. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you're collaborating and can't figure things out, you know, reach out. Uh, the first line of defense is by help desk ticket, um, by yourself as the MSS lead to put that through to us. That will escalate it to us at the division level and we will take a look at it as a team. One of the team members will have a look at it and try to provide some supports. The more detail you can give us around the context or screenshots or things in the help desk ticket, the better. And then if we need help and can't figure things out, we can escalate it to the provincial level and get back to you with some information. So that's sort of the formal process. But that being said, we don't want anybody to struggle, you know, if, if we can and you need to just pick up the phone and call us or, you know, send us a personal email about something. Uh, we certainly won't. <laughs> we will certainly respond to you. We won't turn you away. Um, but the formal processes are to to submit the help desk ticket and the main reason for that is just that um, we're all able to kind of build a knowledge base about what are some common questions you know what are things that are um, you know in need of some further supports that helps us to to better support you this session isn't live today, but if you do have any questions as you're beginning to get prepared for supporting uh, yourself and your colleagues for the next school year, please reach out. Um, you could try maybe giving us a call today or emailing or a formal help desk ticket request and we'll try to help you get uh, oriented and on track just as quickly as we possibly can. Um, so before I turn it back to the explore time, just thank you. Thank you to all of you for being willing to take on this leadership role within your schools and to support all things My School Sask in relation to Teacher Gradebook. Um, have a fantastic 2021-2022 uh, school year and we'll be in touch. So now I will direct you back to that explore on your own slide. Take care.